guys could use a hand up there. No, stay in God the Bunker. Oh, I want to fight. Hello, Bottom Books fans. This is Scorp1701, and tonight we are going to be taking a look at the Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Kingdom Inferno. So, take a look at the box. You can see it's in its standard Kingdom box. You have Inferno here, you have Takaratomi, you have Transformers Generations, you have Transformers, you have Hasbro 8 Plus Kingdom logo here, you have Inferno in his fire truck mode. On the side of the box, you have Inferno in his robot mode. He's a knocker. He is a Voyager class. So, yes, that is a bigger figure than your deluxes. On the side of the box, you have the awesome Transformers Kingdom logo poster esque type artwork. And it is really cool. You have authentic Transformers symbol. You have the Kingdom logo there. On the top of the box, you have a huge Autobot symbol. You have Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy. He is War for Cybertron Kingdom 19. That is cool. On the bottom of the box, you have some credits for the box and a barcode. Finally, coming to the back of the box, you have product shots of Inferno in his robot mode, Inferno in his fire truck mode, and some more credits for the box. And that is it for the box. No one wants to see Inferno in the box. I know I don't. So let's get him out and see what he can do. And here we have Inferno out of the box. And out of the box, he stands just over six inches tall. And he comes with a few accessories that we'll take a look at in just a moment. He also comes with a nice set of instructions that will help you transform him from a robot to a fire truck and from a fire truck into a robot. And finally, he comes with an awesome collector's card. Now, this is just one of the cards that you can get from each of the kingdoms, everything f but the core class and apparently the Walgreens exclusive because the red alert did not come with a card. But here we have the awesome Autobot Optimus Prime. And this is not the first time we've seen this card. We've had about two of these uh, Optimus Prime cards. One uh, we peeled back and he was deceased, which is very sad. And one that we peeled back and he was a cool semi-truck. So let's see what we get with this one. And it's the same card. It's Optimus standing there and it's very holographic-y and prism-y. And you have Optimus Prime, Autobot, and Kingdom uh, logo there on the back. You just have the gold disc, Kingdom logo, Hasbro. And that is cool. And then what we could do is fold this corner down and it becomes a sticker. And you also see a second type card behind it. And it is going to be Optimus in his same standing pose. So that is really cool. All right, can't get enough Optimus in my opinion. <laughs> so let's get rid of this card and zoom back out so we can see Inferno. And I think I will do the review a little different tonight. I think instead of Checking out Inferno first, I'll take a look at these cool little accessories. So the first accessory we're going to take a look at is this little sculpted hose. Now, there's not really much to it. It's just sculpted nice, and it's uh, circular, and it has a tab here that can pour into a couple places, and you get two of these. Now, it's, I think, basically just for looks. But if you are so inclined, he can hold this. I don't know if he could use it as a weapon or throw it at people or just say, hey, look, I have a hose. <laughs> but this is mostly for vehicle mode. And when you get him in his vehicle mode, you can basically port these in to the back ports. You actually have two ports that you can port them into. You can either port them into up here or you can port them down here. The instructions will tell you that you need to port them down here with the hose facing backwards. So this would not be the correct one to put there. We need to put this one here. So it'll just tab right into there. And you have a fire truck with a hose attachment. So that's not bad. Then we'll turn around and we'll put this one on as well like that. So. Yeah, there you go. There is your hose attachments. Moving on. 
And for the next accessory we have, it's his first hose cannon, and it's okay. It's done in gray. It's nice sculpted detail and mold. There isn't any paint on it, and it can be used in both forms. On his robot mode, it attaches at the head, so that is neat. On the fire truck mode, it attaches right here at the end of the ladder, and it can be shooting off water and stuff like that, so that is cool. Moving on. And here we have his second water cannon, and this is really nicely done. It's got a good mold and sculpt to it. It has some nice silver paint, and basically this is going to be what we would have instead of a right hand on Inferno. So you have a lot of Autobots who don't have but one hand. Inferno is going to be one of those, and this will switch out for his right hand. Now he has a perfectly sculpted, molded right hand. If you don't like this, you can use the right hand in robot mode, but for me, he will always look like the cartoon, and in the cartoon he had this for his right hand, and it plugs in right there. Really nice and good and it can also be stored in the fire truck mode on the back of the ladder section like such so you don't lose it and that's always going to be annoying if you did lose it all right moving on and for inferno's final accessory he does come with his laser rifle and it is really nice again it is just molded black plastic there is a lot of good detail in there if you want to look at the barrel and the handles and all sorts of cool stuff little parts coming off the back so yeah take it leave it definitely need a gun and if you are curious yes this is the same gun that came with grapple and they are exactly the same same mold same everything so there's not really any difference so you can interchange them if you are so inclined all right moving on now let's come in real close on inferno and take a look at him so starting with the head the head is okay this is not one of my favorite inferno designs there's actually two types of heads when it comes to inferno that they used and interchangeably throughout the series now this is your standard toy-esque head it's nice you have some nice yellow up here on the uh, ears and you have a silver here for the crest which is really good nice black helmet i like that he's got a nice silver painted face and he has blue eyes love me some blue eyes on my bots but that's pretty much all the paint you're gonna get on this guy he's all done in just molded plastic you do get a little bit of translucent plastic here on the chest for the black of the windshield of the fire truck you have an autobot symbol here which is really nice next set of paint right here is going to be his bumper and it's got some nice silver but some of mine is chipping already right here which is kind of a bummer but that's okay let's zoom out a bit so we can get a better look at this guy and he's done really nicely Basically, you have some gray shoulder pauldron type things sticking out here. You have red arms, black fists, except over here where you have the hose cannon. Black for the midsection and the hips. And then coming down to red upper and lower legs. Coming around to the side, you have your t tires here and the attached hoses. And that's pretty much it for what he looks like. It's very simple, black and red motif. And coming around to the back, you can see that the fire engine ladder folds up nicely. And that is really cool. I like how they compacted that. And that is basically going to be what Inferno looks like. Now... We could put him out to the side and bring in Grapple. And like I said, this is going to be pretty much the same toy. The difference between Grapple and Inferno is going to be some paint apps and the attachment to the arm accessory to the back of the vehicle. The head is also different. If we scroll in, I will show you the difference between the two heads. Now, Inferno has had this head before. It's basically a more softer head that has kind of ears poking out to the side and then the middle section. So I have seen Inferno like this, and uh, but 
you know, they gave us this. I guess they wanted to change it out, do something different than what they did with Grapple. And I think that's pretty cool. And Inferno does have these molded side pieces to the top of his head. So that's another difference there in the mold, I guess. So sorry about that. But yeah, for the most part, you're going to have the same toy just re painted and slightly remolded. All right, moving on. And for our articulation, starting at the head, the head is kind of boxed in, so there's not a lot it can do, but it will go around 360 degrees, so you get some lefts and some rights in there. Doesn't move down, it doesn't move up, and it doesn't wiggle or waggle. But uh, eh, that's kind of what you get when you're in a box. The cannon over here at his head can go up and down, so that is cool. His little head... Uh, wings or side wings what do you want to call these they do go in and out but that's mostly due to transformation coming down to his shoulder shoulder can go around 360 degrees it can come up from the body and back into the body so that is neat the little parts here on the top of the shoulder do not move so don't try to force those he does have some bicep rotation around 360 degrees coming down to his elbow which is nice, got a good 90 degree elbow there. Coming down, there is no forearm rotation and his hands can swivel in and out basically due to the transformation hinge. Okay, coming to the middle of the body, you do have waist articulation. He can go around 360 degrees at the waist and he can crunch down and he can crunch back. And coming to the legs themselves, legs can go up a long way. He can get some really high kicks, and he can kick back a long way, and he can kick out to the side a long way. So there's not much he can't do with these legs. He does have thigh rotation, 360 degrees here. Coming down to a knee bend. Good range knee bend like that. And uh, if you have your knee bend here like a standard, it can kind of kick forward just a hair. But I'm not sure you know, why they'd want to do that. It'd probably set the figure off balance and he'd fall over. But hey, it's there. Coming down, he does not have a boot cut. But when you get down to his foot, the foot can go down a lot and it can go up but you'll have to break a connection and that's okay. And the foot does rock out to the side. So you get a little bit of a rocker there. So that is cool. And that is gonna be Inferno's articulation. Moving on. And for comparison, here you have Earthrise Prime, Earthrise Prowl, Kingdom Red Alert, and Earthrise Grapple. And this looks really good with the emergency vehicles up front. Then you have Prime and Grapple, the mold mate. So yeah, I like these comparisons. All right, moving on. And for transformation, now this is going to be pretty much exactly like the grapple transformation, but because I started grapple off in vehicle mode and then transformed him to a robot, I kind of cheated, and I hate that because this is how Inferno comes out of the box, so we kind of need to start there. All right, so to get him transformed, I like to do a little bit of prep work, and that will be we need to take off his cannon here, and then we need to take off his cannon here. <laughs> and then we can fold back these little head wings and they are on tabs and so there's a tab here and a port there so it will port right in there and it won't go anywhere I like that get that out of the way all right want to put in his actual hand like such that's a very tight hand joint so eh, be very uh, careful with that all right so now with the feet the feet are going to come down and then they're going to come out and then back in. So you're going to bring it down and then kind of forward and it will kind of hinge into place like that. So now he has this big long uh, guy right here. Let's zoom out just to make sure we get everything. Oh gosh, that's all the zoom I got. All right. So from here, we're going to turn it around and we are going to take his head section off and it's just like sitting right on top of the cab there. So it's okay. And we're going to unfold the 
uh, apart from the back you can see here it's tabbed in so that will actually come out a long ways there you go all the way make sure you get it all out and stretch down so there you go and then we'll bend the cab up a little bit so there you go now the head will fold in back so you got that and then you'll straighten out this section to where it will collapse and then you're going to peg these two ports into these two holes on the back of the feet as it were now remember what i always say about pegging things in if you have to don't do it as hard as you can because the harder you peg in the harder you and more force you're going to have to use to get it back out and if it doesn't line up properly move this section up a little bit and then you'll get it to where it needs to be tabbed in okay there's one and there is the other so good all right now what we're going to do is bend the arms back and the tops of the silver pieces here are going to fold right into this little cavity. So what we'll do is we'll just pull the arm back from the side. And what you want to look for is it's going to come in and you want to have the um, open part right here facing down. So the inside of the cuff, it needs to be pointing down the inside of the forearm. So that will fold right into place like such and then do the same thing with the other side. Let's see, you'll have to turn it a little bit. You'll just have to turn the forearm, sorry, like that. And then it will fold in like such. No, I didn't turn it right. But anyway, it will eventually fold right. And then when you have both of the empty forearms facing down you can put the arms together and then you'll have two more tabs right here on the side here and here and the buttons or the ports here and here will tab into those and secure them so there all right and the final thing you need to do is bring the ladder section around and down so that's where it goes it will extend and you can either have it down like this or you can put it up like one click and have it like that which i think looks a lot better for the most part this is inferno in his fire truck mode so let me make sure he's all squished together and we will get back to the review and here we have Inferno in his fire truck mode, and it's good. Again, there's not a lot of detail that we didn't see in robot mode. It's all red plastic. You do see the tires a little better. They are black, and they have some red on the inside, so that is neat. Again, you got your hose detail here, and some molded stuff coming around the side. The front, not a lot of difference. You do get the cab lights a little more prominent now that the head is out of the way, and they're nice and silver then that's again pretty much it the back nothing much to see here the ladder does extend and go back and forth it is kind of a bear to get it in there but once you get it loosened up it uh, goes in and out very nicely and make sure you store your weapons i don't i didn't do it in the transformation but the Hand hose can go here, and then the head hose can go here. And on the bottom, again, there's nothing there. Just a bunch of long legs. Doesn't really look like a robot, so I think they do a good job hiding him and converting him. So, yeah. And that is going to be Inferno's fire engine mode. Moving on. And for comparison, here you have the bots in their vehicle mode. And I think it's really neat. A lot of cool uh, things you could do here in their vehicle modes. First off, let's take a look with him in Prime. Uh, he's going to be obviously bigger than Prime. Fire truck should be. But for the most part, cab-wise, I think it would be more to scale if uh, Inferno was a bigger cab. But he's mostly long ways than he is tall so that is okay though so all right prime out then we have prow and prow is going to be a small car compared to the fire truck again the 
scale of the fire truck itself for some reason it's long and it's big but it's not as tall as it should be to compare with the cars i think so there you go then you want to have him with his partner red alert fire rescue team i like that you know have these two da -da -da -da. of course we saw this a little bit ago when we did the review for the walgreens exclusive red alert so that is neat nothing new there finally we have him with his mold mate grapple and i think this is going to be a cool comparison we're going to zoom in on this so we can see a little bit of the nuances and differences so obviously the arm on grapple is going to be different than the ladder on inferno because they do two different things this is a ladder for rescue and grapple is a crane for moving stuff around so you're going to have a different attachment here as opposed to inferno's ladder so that is okay though now the turrets again can move on both of them go around 360 degrees now, our turret our ladder or whatever you want to call it and yeah so there you go Ferno has the side wings and grapple has a little bit more uh caution decal painting on him so there you take a little bit you give a little bit so they're not going to be completely the same and uh obviously you got the and you got the hoses here for inferno as opposed to nothing here on grapple but you do get a little more paint on the sides for his stabilizers so yeah that is gonna be your vehicle comparisons moving on and this has been the transformers war for cybertron trilogy kingdom inferno and this is a great figure very much updated from the g1 toy very cartoon accurate and if you knew anything about hasbro you knew he was going to be coming from the moment they gave us earthrise grapple and i have to say i really don't mind buying two of the same molds and sculpts when it comes to different characters like this i think there is enough different between Inferno and Grapple to make the purchase worthwhile not to mention that they were two completely different characters in the show and it's just a no-brainer to me that you're gonna have to buy both of them just like the Seekers and just like Prowl, Blue Streak and Smokescreen it's just one of those things that unfortunately you're gonna have to do if you want to collect the entirety of the characters and such when it comes to the figure liked everything about him his transform was very simple and easy his accessories made sense the paint scuffing already is kind of annoying so if you're looking for him happy hunting he's been out for a while so you may have to find him online but he still shouldn't cost more than 35 or 40 dollars all right guys that's the review i hope you enjoyed it and until next time keep playing Another day, another adventure.